My experience with cyber learning started um, pretty much as a result of being a teacher fellow at Northwestern. And I went to a leadership conference and saw Kemi Jonah from Northwestern speak, and he talked about using remote labs. And to me, that was fascinating because a huge interest of mine is bringing real life instruments into the classroom. I look around my classroom and I see my kids working with beakers and graduated cylinders. And in the real world, they're working with instruments that are $100,000. And as I send them off to college, I think they're not really getting what they're supposed to be getting out of their public school education. I want to give them access to instruments that I'll never be able to afford in my classroom. The idea of remote labs, the concept behind it is students from anywhere around the world could go online and they could access an instrument remotely. So they're able to pick the variables that they want to change. They're able to set the parameters of the experiment and go through the process of scientific design um, by really accessing the instrument. It's not a virtual lab. It's not a canned lab. It's not a simulation. You can see the instrument moving. You can watch your experiment running. And the kids are fascinated by it. So um, my students right now are working on um, a radioactivity lab where they access a Geiger counter in Queensland, Australia. And what they're studying is actually nuclear chemistry and the effects of gamma rays and beta particles and alpha particles. But we do it under um, the subtext of is your cell phone, cell phone going to fry your brain? Now, a cell phone doesn't release gamma radiation. It actually works using microwave radiation. But what they learn is, is that all electromagnetic radiation um, acts in a similar way, that intensity is proportional to 1 over distance squared, which is a very fancy mathematical way of saying the farther you step away from the source of radiation, the less intensity you're going to receive. So we start off by asking the kids, uh, how many of you sleep with your cell phone under your pillow? And all of the kids raise their hands. And um, as our lessons go on and we learn about um, half-lives and different types of radiation and um, our whole nuclear chemistry curriculum, they go on um, line eventually and they run an experiment. They set up the scientific design by themselves at home. We do not do it in the classroom, which provides a lot more time to work on other curriculum. They run their labs after school, at night, 3 in the morning, whenever they want to. And uh, come back the next day, we do peer review, which is something that you rarely ever get in a high school classroom where they actually get to collaborate and talk about their results and decide, was your data better than mine? What did you try um, to work with? What were your variables? Um, how many distances did you select? And maybe why was yours better than mine? There's not one right answer, but the students really get a chance to talk about maybe where the weaknesses were in their experimental setup. Then they go back home again. They work on a second run of the experiment, and what we're seeing is their scientific design dramatically improves. The fact that they got to do peer review and the fact that they have a lot of time at home, not a 50-minute class period, but a lot of time at home um, to think about um, how to design a really good experiment. We, we've seen the proof through studies that um, they're picking um, more distances to check, they're looking at greater time periods, they're running more trials, and um, they're doing better science. And the outcome was, was awesome because we started this off with the question of, of, is my cell phone frying my brain? And all of those students that had slept with their cell phones under their pillow and thought nothing had been wrong with it, not only are they not doing that anymore, they're putting the cell phone as far away from them as possible. They're not wearing their cell phone in their pockets anymore. If it's the girls, they're putting it in their purses. If it's the guys, they're turning them off until they use them. And I think what my kids got out of it, for now, it is safer to get the cell phone away from your brain, um, probably not to use any type of device that's going to work wireless and be very, very close to their brain in their ear. Um, so I think that it, it was a topic that caught their interest, and they really seemed to enjoy what they were learning. Things that I would do to um, kind of reassure a teacher that it's okay to try some new things. Um, first, there's a lot of people like me that are out there that will teach webinars for free to them on how to use this curriculum and how to use remote labs. So 
Um, I can walk them through it in less than an hour and say, this is how you access it. This is how you use the curriculum. This is how you embed it into your own curriculum. And it doesn't take that much time outside of what you're doing. Um, for me, I would really push them to try it because my kids were so fascinated by it. Um, and it's exposure to instruments that they'll never see. If we really want to prepare high school kids for college, wouldn't it be, be great if they had access to these instruments before they got into the real world and had to get a job? I don't think that beakers and graduated cylinders are preparing them for real life. Uh, I want them to have skills that can go into a career.